All right, in this section, I'm going to do a little case study for you guys. Again, we're going to compare two different philosophies. Uh, so first game I like to look at is uh, from J-Wall and Skimmel and Man19. Uh, so again, first, we're going to kind of compare you know, how people people's approach to defending uh, trips head end. Now, again, Skimmel is you know one of the best players in the world. But again, he is not one of the best defensive players in the world. Uh, he's he's a pretty he's a solid defensive player. Uh, he's he's going to be really basic, predictable, and repetitive on defense. So uh, as you're going to see in this game, uh, he really he really relies on stock coverage, and it's kind of his team to get pressure or shed you. Uh, and he's not really going to make you know the best coverage adjustments on defense. Um, and I'll kind of show you guys kind of the weakness of you know playing kind of basic and predictable on defense and running more of you know stock coverage. So. Again, in this in this Madden, it was Madden 19. Kind of the meta on defense was, you know, Crossfire 3. And again, it's a cover 3 shell. Uh, and it has, like, a 3 rack by the safety over the middle of the field. And basically, the 3 rack uh, kind of does a good job of, like, lurking over the middle of the field. And, you know, defending drags or any curls over the middle of the field. Uh, and again, the weakness of cover 3 is going to be the sidelines. And so, the way Skimmel's playing defense is... Uh, he's again. He's never gonna man anyone up on defense again, unless it's a really big situation. Again, he's gonna play. Uh, if he's coming out on cover two, again, it's gonna look like cover, cover two by the time the ball is snapped. If he's running cover three, it's gonna look, you know, really similar to what, to what it, to the play he came out in. So again, if he comes out on cover three, again, he's not gonna make many adjustments to that. It's gonna stay fairly stuck. And again, you know, if you're playing maybe, not at a really high level. Again, then maybe maybe that can be a really effective strategy. But again, when you're playing, you know, someone that's really uh, passing effectively on you, sometimes you do gotta think outside the box because again, there's gonna be certain routes that are really effective first stock coverages. And again, we have to think outside the box. We have to implement some hybrid coverage. So again, I'll show you this first game here. And Skimmo is gonna I'll, I'll show a few examples. But Skimmo is gonna give this corner out up the whole game. And what Skimmo is trying to do is. He's, he wants to take his user and go and run and guard the, the corner route here. And I'm sorry about the... It's the best quality I can do, but... Again, yeah, CMO is on the safety here. So, again, his strategy... He wants to go and user guard the corner route every time. But again, when you take your user in the middle of the field and you, you, and you want to go and run and guard the silence every time, the problem with that is then you're going to give up the middle of the field every single time. So, again, watch here. Watch the dilemma he's going to run into. So... The in route's going to be wide open over the middle of the field. Uh, and again, he kind of just runs into a dilemma. Do I go over the in route? Do I guard the B corner route? So again, there's going to be really two routes that he kind of has to user guard here. And because he's playing in this fairly in this stock coverage, again, he's going to run cover three, not really man anyone up. And again, anytime you have to feel like you have to run with the route every time with the user, it's just going to open up so many other routes underneath. As you saw here, Skimmel is running has to run underneath with the in route, but is also also has to go and guard the corner out as well. So again, he has a huge dilemma here because again, he is gonna, you know, limit himself to you know basic coverages on defense. And again, show it one more play here. So again, you gotta think on defense. You know, what are the main what are the main routes I gotta worry about? What are the best routes in this formation? What are the routes that can kill me? And okay. And then ask yourself, what is my base coverage on defense, and how can I, and how can I enhance that, you know, to stop, you know, the main routes in this formation. And again, when you think of trips tight end, you know, think real quick. What are the routes that come to mind? What are the, what are the big play routes that can kill you? And again, that's going to be the corner route by B, and as well as the crossing route by B. And again, it's the best routes are going to be on that same receiver. Um, who is uh who again is the icon is going to be B or on PlayStation it's going to be Circle, so what can you do to that? Again, we can you start to utilize bracket coverage or hybrid coverage. You know he can still run this cover three, but you know maybe man this guy up so he doesn't feel like he has to run follow B around the field, which is going to open up so much else, so many other routes. And again, it said he's gonna he 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 doesn't you know he's not gonna adjust too much on defense and he's gonna keep giving up throughout this game, you know, the B crosser and the B corner out. And we'll run here. And again, he's going to run into a dilemma on defense, you know. 
Do I go and guard the the drag underneath, or do I go and guard uh, the B crosser? Because again, there's multiple people crossing over the middle of the field. Again, what he really has to do is take one of those away with his adjustments. And what you, what, what you got to be thinking is, okay, who is that main receiver? And that main receiver, is that should be the guy that you should be looking to kind of man up and kind of have bracket coverage around him. And again, the main receiver is B because, again, he's on that B crossing route and he's on the B corner route, which he has hit both now. Again, now let me fast forward later into the game. Again, Skimmel has given this route up a million times in this game. And let me go to, again, fourth quarter. It's going to be the same thing from Skimmel. So he's going to end up getting stopped here. And he's going to continue to give up, you know, the same thing that's been killing him the whole game. So, again, this B crosser and B corner has been really been killing him. Because, again, he's trying to run with that guy every time. So, again, j -Well knows that the weakness of cover three is going to be, you know, a crossing route or a corner route. Uh, and Skimmel has to know that and kind of just say at some point, okay, I got I to man up and, you know, kind of bracket this guy. You know, give him extra attention on defense. And he's not going to do that. Again, he's going to continue. Uh, this is kind of how Skimmel plays. He's really, you know, he can he can put together a decent scheme. But, again, he's going to be really basic and, you know, kind of stubborn throughout the game. And he's not going to really, you know, think outside the box on defense. And, again, he's going to. Again, see the dilemma uh, Skimmel's running into is, again, since his user is in the middle of the field, he still has to, you know, respect these routes coming over the middle of the field. So he's trying to go and user this corner route every time. But, again, then he's going to leave the middle of the field wide open. So, again, he's running into a dilemma. Do I guard the middle of the field here? Or do I run to the sideline and uh, guard the B corner route? Because, again, these zones are not going to guard this B corner route, as you see. Again, it's going to get over the top underneath the deep blues and over the top of these clouds. Skimmel really needs to man this route up, again, to kind of support his zones. And, again, if Skimmel wanted to go over there and user this here, again, he would have given up the tight end curl underneath for a really big gain. So, again, really big dilemma here. And, again, he's going to give up the B corner route for the, again, you know, he's given it up so many times this game. So, again, that's really, this is really where when we want to start utilizing and implementing hybrid coverage is saying okay you know what what's the main route and what's killing us uh, what's the weakness of our base defense and then kind of again strategically uh, and know which which guy to man up strategically so now let's kind of go to uh, someone who I thought approached a uh, trip setting really well and this was Wesley versus Fancy again this is a really recent example from when I made this video and this is right at the end of man 21 the man bowl again I'm gonna skip to to and again so again Wesley is gonna utilize hybrid coverage again Wesley again is not one of the best defensive players but uh, he lives with someone like Henry who again is a really uh, he's kind of a he's I would say he's a defensive genius he makes great coverage adjustments he thinks outside the box again Henry himself is gonna utilize a lot of hybrid coverage because again he knows that he's going to know the weaknesses of his stock coverages and then it's going to man up he's going to man up the guys that can beat his stock coverage so again as i was telling you guys okay if you want to think okay what are the main routes and trips head end it's you know it's going to be the cross or in corner route from b so what wesley is going to do a lot in this game is he, he's going to man up b uh, with one of his safeties at linebackers and he's still going to have the purples on both outsides so again this crossing route and corner route is going to be bracketed so again this crossing route and corner route might be man coverage sometimes but again when you combine it with a purple on, on the outsides again it's going to be really tough because the guy's going to be basically double team and again you're going to see this a lot in this game so here uh wesley is going to cross man uh, he didn't man up directly, but again, uh, cross manning works as well if they allow you to do that. So, again, Wesley knows that um, B is going to be a lot, on a lot of those cross routes, those drags, those slants. Again, and look at uh, this outside, the strong safety uh, outside linebacker, outside of Kittle here. Uh, he's going to be cross man onto B, and again, it's going to make Wesley's job on defense so much easier. Uh, you know, and compare it to kind of uh, the Skimbo game. Uh, where Skimmel was just so stressed with his user the entire game because again he wasn't 
he was running such stock defense uh, that he kind of had to that he he really had to uh, use her multiple routes in the field because again he wasn't making you know good coverage adjustments he was keeping his his coverage stock basically and again the problem with that is there's going to be many routes that get in between these stock zones so again what Wesley did is he he crossed him in one of Fancy's main routes which was B and again it made his job as a user so much easier so he didn't Wesley didn't feel like he had the user multiple people on the field since again one of the main routes is manned up and then Wesley's going to run with one of the other main routes which was the tight end crosser and as you can see here uh and it's just a, a little subtle minor adjustment but it makes such a huge difference because again he's still basically playing cover three he well, so he's still going to enjoy the benefits of cover three so he's not going to really get get beat deep he's still going to have purples on the outside to help defend flats and corners look he still has he, he just crossed me on one of the main routes and again he still has a hook over the middle he still has purples on the outside so it's still cover three but again he's just adding in that extra element just enhancing his base coverage just slightly and it's it's going to make all the difference so uh, it's just making it a much easier job for his user and again we'll skip ahead here show a few more a couple more examples from this game and again uh, Wesley is gonna run this defense majority of the game so he's gonna mix up the blitz as well uh, so he's not just going to run hybrid coverage every single play. Again, he's going to mix it up. He's still going to blitz him sometimes um, just to keep Fancy honest. And Because anytime, if you run something over and over, eventually someone can beat it. Uh, so you kind of want to mix in pressure sometimes. Uh, so they so Fancy can't feel like he can just run, you know, five out. So Fancy's going to kind of have to beat uh, this type of defense with four people on a route. Uh, because Wesley is showing the threat of a blitz here. Uh, as you're going to see here, uh, Wesley is going to man up B, and he's going to man up A as well with his safeties at linebacker. Uh, I don't know if he mans up the safety at linebacker on the tight end here, but B is definitely going to be manned up. And again, one of the other main routes in Trip's tight end is going to be this tight end crosser um, and like a drag by the tight end. So again, what Wesley is doing is he's taking away uh, one of the best routes in Trip's tight end by manning it up. And he's still gonna be, that route's still gonna be bracketed by like purples on the outside, and he's gonna have support deep from deep blues, uh, while while still taking away uh, one of the best routes by just playing man. So again, as you saw here, the tight end is manned up, uh, B is manned up. And it looked like even X was kind of manned up here. So again, uh, he's still gonna Wesley still has this kind of support from his purples on the outside here. As you see, the purple's gonna kind of guard Y. Again, he's still Fancy's not going to be able to attack this deep because Wesley still has the three deep blues in the field from the from the cover three. Uh, well, but he's he's since he's manning up these some of Fancy's main routes. Again, it's going to make this really challenging for Fancy because now now he's not just playing straight up man coverage. He's playing you know hybrid. Uh, so again, he can't Fancy can't just run his typical man beaters. You know, he can't just run his typical cover three beaters. Again, it's it's mixed coverage, so it makes it a lot tougher. And it's a lot more unique. So, again, people aren't really used to playing versus this type of, you know, coverage shell. So, again, it kind of forces the offense to kind of have to think outside the box and offense as well now. Because, again, so you might be asking, you know, why not just run straight up man coverage? Uh, because if we run just straight up man coverage, uh, then it's going to be a lot easier, you know, to kind of beat over the top and kind of work the underneath so uh you know fancy could start running like the s post um you know motion over crossers you know stuff like that it'll be a lot easier to you know beat the man coverage deep over the middle whereas uh, when you're just manning up people out of zones again it's going to be difficult to beat this style of defense over the top so you still have to kind of work the underneath the intermediate uh whereas like if you're just playing straight up man again it's going to be you can get beat over the top pretty easily so Again, we're going to be taking away the main routes uh, by utilizing hybrid coverage, as you can kind of see here in this example. And we're not, and as you also can see, you're not going to be worried about getting beat over the top as well. So again, that's kind of the great benefits of of implementing hybrid coverage.